immediately after it's finished, nothing live obviously, and then we'll do a section embargo till 10.30 tonight. So nothing out of the ordinary. Um, we'll start late, please. Thank you. Afternoon, Mike. Um, Afternoon. What was your reaction, first of all, to the news yesterday that Claude Powell would be leaving the club and how will you reflect on his time in charge? That was sad, really. It's always sad to see a manager leave, leave the club. He had the club at heart and he's brought several good things to the club, you know. Uh, what was the sorry the, the mood? Mood. Mood's always fine. The professional players, they'll get on with the job. You know, uh, we see many managers come and go and uh, they've been bright today and uh, they've been good. Do you think the players let him down to some degree by not getting the results? Uh, no, I wouldn't say they let him down at all. They, if you watched and looked at the results, yes, they've been poor, but the performances have been decent. If you saw the Spurs game, totally outplayed Spurs, but I think we outplayed Man United. So the performances have been really good. Uh, just sometimes you don't get that rub of the green. Uh, mistakes, but they're, they're not deliberate mistakes, they're just mistakes. What's your understanding of the situation as it stands? Because we've, I think we've learned this morning that the club are looking to make, or well, they could make an interim appointment. That would put you in a good position, wouldn't it, to take the job between now and the end of the season? What's the position? Oh, we've been told, uh, me and Adam, it's uh, take charge of Brighton and we go on from there. That's all we're focused on is Brighton. There's going to be lots of speculation. This is a fantastic club and it's a great opportunity for anybody who comes and takes a job because it's, it's, it's a great job. Do you and Adam have a clear idea of what, needs to happen with the squad in order to get them back to, to winning games yeah well, we, we've got a game plan uh, for tomorrow but it, it's good that the games come so quick you know uh, it's the best thing that can happen after a disappointment after a defeat we don't want a long week you know we've got this game coming up straight away the time frame's been very short so we've not really had a lot of time with the players it's just making them bright and making them feel good about themselves why do you think the form has been so erratic this season I mean there's been some spectacular results that you know, obviously Man City, Chelsea away, Everton away and then interspersed mm. with obviously Newport and Cardiff at home. It's difficult to put your finger on because if we did, we'd have done it seven games ago, eight games ago. Um, it's basically the same players. But like I said, the performances have been good. I think they've been so close, you know. This is a good, good team. A good, young, bright team and uh, good players, honest players. The spirit's fantastic. Uh, I think in football terms, we've got to keep it out of one end and score in the other. We've not scored enough goals and we've conceded first far too many times. One of your former players, Robert Huth, said that he didn't find Claude Puel a particularly inspiring individual. Is that the impression you got from speaking to the players? No, every man has a different way of dealing with players, don't they? They have a different personality uh, and that close personality was, was what you saw. So uh, at the end of the day, his coaching knowledge and managerial knowledge was excellent. Long term, what type of manager do you think can take this club forward long term? Well, they've got all the tools here. We, we've got the process of building a new training ground. The stadium's going to be expanded. Uh, we've got fantastic owners, uh, great support. And we've got a very, very good squad, by the way. Young, hungry players. Now, somebody who can come in and work with those players, nurture them. And we've got to keep that squad together. Notwithstanding what could happen here do you personally have ambitions to manage wherever that may be no uh, I'd, I'd love my time here 14 years as a coach uh, first team and goalkeeper coach so I love that role that role's uh, second to none for me and I love it I just like assisting whoever would like to come in just finally for me what are you expecting from Brighton because they've had a rough uh, rough time of it of late as well yeah, uh, very organised team, uh, good on the counter. They'll sit in with maybe a, a block against us. Uh, you know, he's, he's a fantastic manager uh, and I'm sure they'll be fighting for their lives and come here wanting to get some points on the board as well. Thank you. Thanks, Aiden. Uh, Linda, please. Hello, I'm Linda from Premier Hi. Productions. Um, can you tell me what do you think Claude Puel's legacy will be here? Well, Claude's got an, an excellent record uh, working with, with youth players and bringing youth players through and, and developing in them for later and, and moving them on at Lille and, and places like that. Um, he's give debuts to Hamza, uh, to, you know, uh, to Harvey Barnes. So, so these young players that have been in the academy, he's given opportunity to. That's what he believes in. That was uh, sort of what he wanted to achieve. The last few games at home... There's been kind of, it seems kind of quite a bad atmosphere. Fans have kind of turned, been ready to boo. Do you think perhaps it might be that little bit easier on Tuesday against Brighton now? 
I hope so because these players need that bit of love from the, the fans and, and it's not from the want of trying sometimes when you have such a youthful team they need a little bit of help and a bit of guidance so we're going to need that fans on Tuesday night to get right behind them from the off because they are trying to do the best and trying to do the best thing for the club a lot of the times things just haven't happened and that haven't had the, the rub of the green. Do you mm. think that this club is so much more capable than what they've done so far? We are a shadow of a doubt. Uh, I spoke to the players this morning, uh, told them how good they are and how good they can be, but also challenged them and said, look, we, we are a top seven team and that's where we should be. Obviously, you've got to earn that, right? And we haven't of late. So that's the challenge. Over the past few months, there's kind of been rumours that players aren't quite so happy with the style of play, didn't really go into what Claude Puel wanted. Did you see any of that and what's the way going forward? No, the, the players are disappointed with the results. They're angry with themselves, they're angry as a group. They're, they manage themselves really well. They're a really good spirit, tight, tight group in there. And everybody who comes in says, wow, what a tight group this is. So they're only angry with themselves, really. They're not really angry with the boss. And you were at training this morning. I guess you and Adam hmm. took training. Yes. H how was everything? How, how was every place? Well, the sunshine helped. It was lovely weather out there. It was beautiful. Everyone comes with a smile when it's sunshine. And, uh, they're professional players. They, knew, they know now they've got to step up and, uh, and go again. And they, they like training. They like playing. And tomorrow night's games just come at the right time. And I'm not trying to get you to dictate or tell us what your team is, but... As a, as a man who's stepping up now into that, that manager's space, will you be changing a whole lot on Tuesday night? I exactly, won't be telling you that. <laughs> I'm not letting them know anything. No, we've, got, we've got a fit squad. 23 players, Chile's fit again, so everyone's available for selection. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, just to uh, confirm, Ben was OK. Everybody else is OK and they're knocked on the weekend. Everyone's fine from the weekend and... Ben Joe was back in the squad. Um, congratulations on the, the temporary appointment, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, 14 years, a long, long time in an association with a football club. What have you learned over those 14 years that's going to help you tomorrow night in the manager's job? Ooh, yeah, 14 years with uh, probably about 14 different managers, different styles. I'm going to be myself. Uh, I'm probably seen on many a time and quite vocal on the side and lively. But uh, listen, I spoke to the players again. When you send them out there, they do the talking. You know, you can't really change much on the side. We've got good players. Uh, we've given them a little pep talk this morning and hopefully they'll go out there and perform. Um, how different might your team talk be? To Claude's pre-match well yeah it will because we're different people do you expect to be a little more vocal tub thumping energetic can we say Claude can uh, be loud at times when he's angry mm -hmm. so it's I, I'm not not a rant and raver beforehand it's more about information these are clever players intelligent players you, you feed them information it's long past shouting and ranting the only ranting I do is at the fourth official and the referee all the time that's the only thing that gets me in bother and you do particularly well at that if yeah, I know, I'm quite proud of that having watched the club for a while um, how can you have an influence on the style of football in two days Mike can you or do you have to use the fundamentals that Claude's put in place for his 16 months or do you try and change it and, and the, the players abide by your style no I think mean, you've answered the question yourself there where you say literally we've had one training session with them because yesterday was a recovery day uh, we've been on the pitches for just over an hour today we will tweak a few things here and there uh, but you know they're, they're not playing poorly by the way you know, they need just a little bit of help and a little bit of loving and, and maybe we uh, get a result. Different because it was relegation at the time during the, the, the season under Nigel Pearson where mm. it did click, didn't it, Mike? And you were here at that time and it felt, it felt like performances were, were close to being there but just not quite clicking. In a similar way, in that there's not relegation at the moment, does it feel any kind of way similar to that and can you see that, that result happening? No, it, it, actually that season we, with Nigel we were losing by the odd goal every time there were tight games and all that uh, we seem to be leaking a, a little bit more this season you know we're a bit more expansive and open uh, so I think we've got to really clamp down on that and concede less uh, we're giving a good account ourselves going forward but not defending so it is slightly different how tough is your team selection as well, Mike? Because of your long association here, Claude, for example, the captain, Wes Morgan, has been on the bench in the last, I think, four games. Mm. Um, you're talking about defence. Um, how difficult is it for you to, to look at the blank sheet uh, and, and ch choose your team? 
not difficult at all. And I, I know these players inside out. I've been here a, a long time. So, and it's purely a footballing decision. It's not a personal one or a friendship decision at all. You've got to make these calls. Uh, Premier League's tough. It's tough to win points. Um, and finally, what would your message be to the fans who are hopefully, I'm sure, going to turn up in their, their droves tomorrow night? What message would you give to them? The fans are excellent. They're, they're here. They're, they've always have been. And it's just get behind them because if they make a mistake, it's, it's an honest mistake. They, they don't do it on purpose. You know, it, it's, uh, they're, they're a young team. They need a little bit of encouragement out there. So get behind them and I'm sure they'll be all right. I wish you well. Thank you very much. Um, Jeff, do you want to give it a couple? <coughs> Hi, Mike. Jeff Hi, Peterson, Jeff. Talk Sport. Um, what sort of relationship do you have with the players and and how will that change going from being one of the coaches to being the boss? It won't change at all. Uh, they know I do things for the right reasons, how I train, how I coach out there, uh, putting them out there to, to win points. And I've told them today, if we the performance levels come down, as in the performance, but we win, I'm happy. So whatever it takes to do to get three points out there, we'll be doing. How good do you think that this squad of players could be? Well, I think it is. Never mind, could be. It is good. I mean, potentially. But, you know, obviously the points haven't matched the performances. Uh, but, you know, you look through the team and, uh, you know, we've got... We just, we just tried to have a, a young versus old, this old school game this morning, 11 versus 11 rather than uh, things. I couldn't find an old school team. You know, I literally got four old school ones, so with Wes Morgan and Johnny Evans and Casper. So, so in the old school was Demari Gray, who's 22. So and that just says it also, you know, I've got 11 all under 21. Because there are such a, a lot of young players, do they need a bit more arms around the shoulder from, from people like you? I think so. I think, you, you know, you, you have players out there, Harvey Barnes and Ben Chilwell, and because they're playing in the Premier League and, you know, you think they're grown men, you think they're, you know, they're invincible, but they're young kids. They do need encouragement every now and again. They need that, you know, arm around the shoulder and, and keep going, you know, because they will make mistakes. They're young kids, so, but we've got to encourage them to keep doing the right things. Is that the, the key art of management then? One of them. Yeah. Um, it's finally for me, looking at the fixtures coming up, teams in and around you, um, some beneath you in, in the table. There is a, one might argue, a, a winnable set of fixtures. Are you looking at that or is it just Brighton and just one Brighton. game? Just Brighton. That's all we've been told for now, Brighton. And, and we need three points. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't want to be looking over our shoulders. Uh, our focus is, is upwards. And you're excited about tomorrow? Always excited, very excited, very, very proud to, to be standing out there tomorrow night. Wish you well. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. So we'll, we'll draw an embargo there, so anything else can all go now, and then anything else will be for 10.30 tonight onwards.